Calculus students, this is day two of my absence, and you are going to be continuing working with the All About Me sheet, um, getting to know and understanding how the first derivative reveals information about the original function, how the second derivative does the same thing about the original function, and how all of the three functions, original, first derivative, and second derivative work together. So this work that you're doing is extremely important um, in order to make sure that you understand and internalize that information. As I said to you already, this is one of the most important uh, topics that you will see on the AP Calculus test. Please make sure that you are using this time to work. You're using the gift of time to work collaboratively, that you are not working on other things, and that by no means are you um, using your phones for any other reason to except maybe to perhaps check a solution. I don't even see a real need to do that during class because those solutions are available to you at home. Uh, I'm not going to spend a ton of time reviewing the homework from last night because the solutions were posted in the Google Classroom. I'd rather you actually work together in collaborative groups to figure that out. Um, I'll just summarize uh, the homework problem that you see on the screen now is problem number two from your homework last night. And in that problem you were given the graph of the first derivative and then you were asked a series of questions about the original function and you were to justify um, your answers using the first derivative and you can see from the homework last night you can see my solutions and my answers in exactly the way that those answers were written up. Um, notice in particular when you get to um, the question letter B on concavity Notice that my answers are supported not with a second derivative argument, but they are supported with a first derivative argument. And the reason that they are supported with that first derivative argument is because that's the graph that I've been given to support myself. So make sure that when you're using the All About Me sheet that you're trying to understand and figure out how to use the particular given function to justify your answers. Same thing with letter C. My um, answers for points of inflection on the original function uh, are justified by and supported by a first derivative argument and not by a second derivative argument because in this case I have not been given the second derivative. Um, we have been given another first derivative graph and so in this case we have g prime of x and so all of my reasoning has to be supported um, with a first derivative argument. I have provided my support and my solutions. Again, these solutions were posted in Google Classroom. I hope that you took the time to annotate your work and that you have questions that you're going to ask of each other when you start working in your groups in just a moment. Uh, before you work in groups, uh, I want to preview the three problems that you're going to be looking at together today, and I want you to think together. I want you to make sense of problems and persevere and solve um, Your homework, your classwork, slash your homework to be finished is page 34. There are three real live, true blue, free response questions. I want you to give it your best effort. But again, I'm going to preview those with you because each of those has a little different twist and turn. The first one, problem number one that I have on the screen now, um, is pretty straightforward and, and is uh, really a very classic all about me question. They give you the graph of the first derivative and they ask you some straightforward answers and your answers should be supported by the first derivative. Make sure that you write very well. Um, notice they say justify your answer, justify your answer, and then you're going to sketch a possible graph. Not much to say on this problem. Again, it's pretty straightforward and it has Second question, and those are the Google Classroom. I, I would prefer you guys to work together in class and not go to the solutions, but get as much done as you can in class and then use the solutions at home to annotate your work and come back with questions uh, from me on Monday. Look at number two, please. In problem number two, you have a piecewise function. We have talked before about how College Board loves piecewise functions. Now, this question that you're looking at we saw something very similar to this on your recent um, uh, quarterly assessment review. There are two pieces two um, pieces of information that have been given to you. And so when you work on part A, you have to use the fact that the function is, um, is continuous at x equal to 1 
and differentiable at x equal to 1. Work together to figure out the continuity piece along with the differentiability piece. Remember that when you um, find the derivative of a piecewise function, you find the derivative in pieces. So you're going to have to deal with the continuity and the differentiability in order to find the values of k and p. If you do not use both pieces of information, you will not be able to find the values of k and p. And notice that in letter b, you need those values to determine increasing and decreasing intervals. And the same thing is true. Use the values of k and p in order to find points of inflection. So a is your key to success. And again, it's something that we've looked at um, in our near past to, um, to solve. The key to, there's a in Google Classroom. Um, and then the last problem, very, 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 very important. You have an original function whose name is f and that function is even. You and your team are going to need to remember what it looks like for a function to be even, the behavior of that function, because notice that in the table of values, the x values, they give you information from 0 all the way to 3. But they're not just giving you information from 0 to 3 if you understand the nature of an even function. They're giving you only half of the information because an even function is one. A basic one that I can draw for you is a parabola, except that's not a great one. Um, it is a function that reflects over the y-axis. So spend time with your team thinking about the characteristics of an even function. Another suggestion that I would make is I would take the information that you find in this table and I would personally transfer at least the first and second derivative information onto a number line. It might be easier to work with and easier to interpret and answer the questions that they're asking us to answer. Uh, the last thing that I will point out in this problem is that the function in question, f, is defined from negative 3 to 3, not just from 0 to 3. So the questions that they're going to ask us are going to include that entire closed interval from negative 3 to 3. Notice that the given function is continuous and it is even. So at this point, I'd like you to diligently work collaboratively with, collaboratively with your teams. You should not need a calculator. You should use your All About Me sheet, and you should make sense of problems and persevere in solving them. And uh, if there's anything that you guys can't get, I'll help you out and, uh, on Monday.